Perfect. Okay. My name is Alicia Walker and I'm calling this meeting to order as co-chair. Governor Baker's extension of the March 12 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the working group. Given that we have a quorum present, I am calling the August 5th, 2021 meeting of the Community Safety Working Group to order at 5.34 p.m. I will call upon each member of the working group by name. At that time, they should unmute their mic and say present. This will indicate that they can hear me and we can hear them. Please remember to mute your mic after saying present. Deborah Ferreira. Present. Russ Vernon Jones. Here. Pat Ananabaku. Here. I want to take a couple of minutes to review the agenda. We will first hear any public comment that members of the public want to provide to the working group. We will not respond to your comments, but we'll listen to your comments carefully. We will then hear comments from members who have something to report to the group and we will get right into the agenda as follows. Um, first, a discussion on community policing guided by the questions submitted by Russ Vernon Jones. Second, resident oversight board in regards to membership, stipend, and consultants. Third, the standing committee. Fourth, subgroup check-ins. And fifth, CRESS implementation follow-up. Our first order of business is the public comment section of the agenda. If any member of the public would like to make a statement, please raise your hand. I will recognize you and ask Ms. Moisen to turn on your microphone. I ask that comments be limited to no more than three minutes. The working group will not be responding to your comments, but we will be listening carefully. I don't think I see any hands. Um, am I missing anybody, Ms. Moisten? Okay. Um, so at this time, I would like to move to the members report section of the agenda. If there's anybody who would like to update us on any work they're doing or events that are coming up, does anyone have anything that they would like to share? Okay, um, I would just like to share in regards to the League of Women Voters Racial Justice Task Force meeting, I think, um, most of us were able to attend, um, and but for those who were not able to attend for the entire event, um, Marcy had reached out to Brianna and I to see if there was possibility in creating a generic letter template that folks could send in support of the CSWG. Um, so we wanted to bring that back to the group because we just were unsure. Um, of if that's something we're interested in at this time and if um, or how we would like to go about that. So we don't have to necessarily talk about that right now, but I just wanted to share that with you all. And then the, so we can move right into the first part of the agenda. I think tonight is the discussions on questions submitted by Mr. Vernon Jones in regards to community policing. Uh, yes, Mr. Vernon Jones. I would like to propose that we give this agenda item a different title. And my suggestion would be community police relations and, and, and ending over policing. And that we then table it until we have an opportunity to identify some recommendations we might have in those areas. I think we had the discussion last week, we pretty much agreed that we wanted to get away from the term community policing altogether, uh, but that we might have some recommendations um, and that some parts of it might have to be referred to the resident oversight board. Um, but if we could retitle this and then table it, uh, that would be my recommendation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Moisten, uh, Ms. Moisten and then Ms. Pat, sorry. Can you just please repeat the new title for me? Well, what I recommended was community-police relations and ending over policing. 
Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Pat? Ms. Marston, um, it's the same question I wanted to ask because I didn't get the title. Okay, great. Um, so is everyone okay uh, first with the name change recommendation as to the subject title? Yes, okay, um, great. And then I just had a, a question for clarification, Mr. Vernon Jones. You would like us to just revisit answers to these three questions specifically and maybe come back when we have um, more formulated rec recommendations in regards to these? No, I actually don't think the questions are relevant anymore. But I think the whole topic is still one that we want to be thinking about and we will have some recommendations. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Pat? I'm kind of moving away a little bit. Um, during the section of uh, member report, I wanted um, Brianna to come in uh, because uh, we met with a resident yesterday and I thought that meeting was extremely productive and I would like Brianna to start and I will add to the conversation. Thank you, Ms. Pat. I wasn't sure if, I, if we were going to do it then or during the traffic control, um, but me and Ms. Pat were able to meet with a community member who is just interested in what we are doing on traffic control. Um, she actually sent up follow-up notes from our meeting, and she brought up a lot of really good points. Um, she sent over a paper called the Stanford Open Policing Project, which I will forward to the group. Um, she found this as a really good resource to learn more about um, recorded vehicle stops and policies. She herself is interested on the data table that's on the APD website that gives information on um, vehicle stops. She, sent, she was very specific in the notes that she wrote. I can forward this to the group now. Um, she was really interested in driver rights and she's wondering if the CSWG would be interested in exploring what policies and procedures exist for um, police officers telling drivers their rights, rights to be stops, right, right to be treated respectfully, right to be told the reason why the vehicle was stopped. Um, another really, really important point that I thought she brought up was now that the marijuana laws have changed in mass, um, how, <sighs> It's important, she thought it would be important to include what amount of marijuana individuals are now allowed to have in their possession and how much um, time and energy is the APD putting on um, those types of stops. And the last thing that she mentioned was transparency and it's what initiated the conversation. Um, she's interested in the data that we've received in regards to traffic stop. And she's wondering if LEAP could help us with some of um, this data for the second part of our charge. In our conversation, she also referred us to a community member who may be able to help us with some research. Um, this community member is a law professor and has students who may be interested in helping the working group. Thank you. You captured it very, very well. So it's consistent with the note that I took yesterday. I thought that um, our meeting was extremely productive and that there are resources out there for us that we can tap into. And in terms of the traffic control, definitely, I think it would be a great idea for us to consider reaching out to um, a professional who has a legal background. I mean, we have you know, the, the advantage also of having Deb Deborah on our team that you know, just overextended, but it's really good that um, we have community members who, you know, really want to help our group with our projects. So it was an exciting meeting. It was one hour, but, you know, she, she really raised a lot of questions for, uh, for us with the traffic control. And we also talked about uh, the surveillance camera, right? Yeah, we talked about camera and, you know, uh, locations where it could be and so on and so forth. It was a very good meeting. Thank you, Ms. Pat and Brianna. Sorry, um, Mr. Vernon Jones, Deborah, and then Brianna. 
is the name of this community member confidential? And no, 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 no. no. And no. who's the community member and who's the, the lawyer? Oh, we're not going to share the lawyer yet because we have not approached her. That's the only okay. reason. That's the only reason. The community member actually is uh, is a retired professor, Ms. Mata, right? Am yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Is that helpful? Uh, she, she has attended our, our, she's listening to our meetings and be very supportive. If it's also helpful, I can just forward the group, um, the notes that she sent me as a follow-up because I know yeah. that was a lot of information all at once. Yeah. So perhaps in our next meeting, uh, Ms. Moisting can put it as part of the packet or something. It's not, yeah, it's not confidential, yeah. Thank you, Ms. Pat and Brianna. Um, Deborah? Yeah, I, um, thank you for getting that valuable information. You know, obviously you all know I'm interested too in, in some recommendations around uh, traffic uh, stops and obviously police not being involved in them and moving violations and all of those things. Um, so uh, yeah, whatever information you all can send our way. And that was one of my questions. Um, do we have like a a date when we're going to be discussing traffic violations. I'm still reading up on it. So it's not like I'm ready to have that discussion myself because I'm still, I know there's a lot of articles and I had asked Brianna to send me some links. So I'm still kind of going through some of those, but I think that would be good just to kind of have like a date when um, we can discuss it and, um, you know, and, and share some ideas. Or I know that you all had started the document also, maybe just reshare that document. And then, you know, for me, I could obviously add to that too, you know, when we have a date that we're gonna be discussing it. Uh, and then I do have a comment about community policing, but let's finish up this discussion, I guess, and then come back to me for that. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ferreira. I'm Ms. Pat. So I'm a, I'm a, I like to make like lists and deadlines and move on. I like to work in bits and bits, you know, like that. That's, you know, that's where my brain works. My thinking is that um, we, we spend, you know, a lot of time on oversight board and I thank, you know, Mr. Ross for that. I'm hoping that we'll be able to submit something this summer to the town manager so that he can start um, recruiting the board. And I'm also hoping that we'll be able to wrap up um, the traffic um, uh, control or whatever, hopefully also the end of the summer. And I know it might feel like very tight, but we're going to have a week off. I'm hoping that we will use that time to, you know, catch up on readings and everything. Because once we were in September, we only have one month left. And then at some point we need to figure out what do we need to tackle next? And then what do we need to hand over to oversight board um, to complete? Because since the town manager is not um, really telling us whether or not you know, he wants us to get a you know, consultant, it looks like we're on our own. So we need to figure out basically what we can accomplish between now and end of October. So that's just my suggestion. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, and just because I'm not sure if this would fall somewhere else on the agenda, I'm looking now, um, there is a space for CRESS implementation follow-up, but Brianna and I also were able to meet with Mr. Bockelman. Um, and so we didn't we were able to just talk with him through the questions. We didn't necessarily get um, answers in our meeting, but he did send an email just a little while ago. Um, I don't know if there's any way, Ms. Moisten, that you might be able to pull it up on the screen because I think this email is gonna be very helpful. So I think Mr. Balkelman is, is um, reconsidering the consultants. Okay. And so he sent us information saying today, just specifically in regards to the consultants, I've discussed the needs of the working group with the finance director and feel we can work with the IFB5 document and the working group to put together a request for quotes, identify funds and make it happen. Um, 
I am assuming this would be in the $10,000 range. Does that seem about right to you? The question is whether you, whether you think the consultants will be over 10,000 or under 10,000. We can do some research on this, but welcome your thoughts as well. Can you see it? Yes, very tiny, yeah, but I'll read it later. It's very tiny, but- um, Very tiny, yeah. If I may. That, oh, that was better. Uh, yes, Ms. Pat. At this point, you know, from, from what I gathered, it looks like what is realistic for us is to accept the under 10K, even if it's two different projects that we need consultant to do for us or something like that. Because if we go over 10,000, it might not, you know, the process of advertising it and everything might not happen by end of October. Thank you, Ms. Pat, uh, Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Owen. Yeah, I was thinking that if if we did stay within the 10,000 uh, realm, um, I thought we were looking more at a researcher or something, just hiring someone so we wouldn't have to go through the IFP, right? So that's what we're doing. Um, so I, for me, that that would work so that we can get someone in as quickly as possible and they could, you know, start doing some research and looking at some of this information that we need for, for some of these areas. I think that would be that would be good. Thank you, Ms. Ferrer. Ms. Owen? I forgot what I was going to say. I'm sorry. No, no, okay. no worries. And then I just, just to follow up to um, Ms. Ferreira's statement. Um, so the the process in which Mr. Balkelman, I believe, is suggesting here is that we go through the the quote process, which I think is... Uh -uh. No. Okay. Oh, sorry. Just because you said working group to put together a request for quotes and identify funds to make it happen. So I, I know that might not necessarily be the process that we talked about, but in this um, email, that's what Mr. Balkelman is suggesting. And I believe that that's also just us choosing three people to ask to give us quotes. And we so we would be able to pick who we would want to work with, three different people ask for quotes. And then um, I believe the process begins like that. Ms. Pat? I'm just worried about time. I kind of like Mr. Ross's suggestion several months ago about uh, the concept of researcher if it's at all possible. Uh, because time is of the essence. We really need to, you know, get, get folks going, yeah, to get this going. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Mr. Vernon Jones? Well, I, I, I'm in agreement that in order to expedite this, you know, I think it's okay that we assume something just under 10,000 so that the quote process can be used. But I think we, you know, if we feel strongly that we want a BIPOC uh, person or group to do this, um, the only way you get that with the quote process is you only ask BIPOC folks for quotes, which is perfectly legitimate. You know, with the quote process, you can choose who you ask as long as they're reasonable people. I mean, you know, logical ones to ask. But I'm not sure we have an agreement with the town manager about what kind of people we would request quotes from. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Pat? Um, the way I'm thinking, I think we should just go with seven gen that started the work for us. And if they need expertise on certain of the topics that we want them to research, they can you know, draw the person, for example, the, uh, the law professor is a BIPOC person. You know, if they think they need, you know, her services, maybe they can collaborate with an example. They can subcontract or something as researcher. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I mean, yeah, again, time is of the essence. I guess my thing would be um, that Alicia and, and Brianna, since you all are the ones in touch with Mr. Bachman, it, it would be to just kind of get back to him and to say, okay, you know, you know, I'm fine with 7th Gen too. And of course we have to figure out if everyone's on the same page about 7th Gen since they already know us, they already did um, the first part. 
but really what we'd have to do is just tighten because we've done a lot of work already too though since we did that that IFB document maybe tighten what it is that we need for these remaining months um, and then like like Ms. Pat said, you know, they can obviously pull from other people, but it really is going to have to be a tightened kind of scope of work um, so that they're able to, to stay within the, the funding limits and also, you know, in, in terms of what it is we need. And we're going to have to be very specific in terms of what it is we need for these remaining months. Uh, but yeah, I think we should just kind of go with, okay, yes, let's go with, you know, if we can, as opposed to getting three quotes. I don't know about all that, but I would rather just go with a um, entity, work with them and then go from there. But so, I, you know, so my thing would be follow up with Ms. Wackelman to see if, if that would be uh, an option. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Ms. Pat. I'm also, in addition to just, you know, the, the timing in an ideal world, you know, we will do the, you know, explore, you know, quotes. However, as we can see, you know, fatigue is already setting in, you know, we don't have all our members every week. You know, that's a sign, you know, I'm worried about burnout, about, you know, stress. And um, we have other lives, you know, beside this. And I know we're doing a service to our community, but I always tell people self-care first. And this is one of the ways to do that. Um, I appreciate the suggestion about, you know, contacting by folks for quotes. Um, I mean, that's fine too, but again, that means then we have to have a subcommittee to interview people, to deliberate who to pick, you know, who, you know, you know, come close to the budget or the, you know, it's just like, at this point, I'm in the mood of like, Let's get done what, as much as we can with the help and wrap this up. Yeah, before we lose everybody. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Mr. Vernon Jones. I just looked back at my notes from our meeting with um, Anthony. And if we stay under 10,000, we can just, the town can just contract with someone. They don't have to go through the quote process or the IFB or RFB process. Mm -hmm. um, but it would require our coming to some agreement with the town manager about hiring someone satisfactory to us. Sounds good to me. And so I also just want to add Brianna and I have a meeting, a follow-up meeting scheduled tomorrow with Mr. Balkelman so we can bring all of these things to him tomorrow. I just wanna be um, clear in what exactly you would like us to relay to him that we're interested in pursuing one specific um, entity to do this under contract, through contract of under $10,000. Yes. And, and we, we don't even know if people. they're going to accept or not. We don't know, yeah. Right, so do you want us to hold off on on suggesting a specific group and just say that we wanna go through that process or do you want us to also gauge his, um, his interest in um, 7Gen, work, us working with 7Gen again? I think we should suggest 7Gen seven when you guys meet with him tomorrow. Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, this is a delicate thing to talk about in a public meeting, but uh, some people have suggested to me that town council did not have a lot of confidence in 7Gen. And I don't know whether that matters uh, since whoever this is, we're going to take their work and put it into our report, I think. We're not as much I don't think we're as much looking for a report from the consultant to the public report. We're looking more for, I think, for them backing us. Um, but I, I don't know whether others know more about that or um, how we might explore that. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Ferreira. 
Yeah, I guess for me, Mr. Vernon Jones, I think that's that's the thing that I would want to hear. And I don't I don't have that information. I know you posed that question. I don't have that information, but that's that's what I would want to hear more about because for me, I was I was satisfied with their work. I thought they did a, a very good job. They provided uh, the data we we needed and, and they did what we needed them to do. Um, so I wouldn't have an issue with continuing forward with um Stevens Gen. So I don't know, you know what the um you know the rumors are or what's the concrete information behind it because i'd like love to hear it if there was some thank you miss for miss pat you know i'm known for speaking my mind um my observation when seven jane presented at the town council i could tell that some of the town councilors, not everybody, I don't wanna accuse everybody from the questions they asked, from their nonverbal um, facial reactions. And the way I read it is an example of white supremacy. Secondly, perhaps some of Seven Gen's recommendation made it uncomfortable for them. I'm not speaking for Seven Gen or for anybody that as a black woman, it wouldn't matter if it's not seven gen. If it's another group that is made up of white folks, white people, some white people will not accept um, their, 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 their project. I know uh, that was, um, I heard that um, something about um, the research um, process you know, people feeling that there wasn't enough um, resident being involved, interviewed. But people forgot that we're in pandemic and it was difficult and it was a difficult topic to discuss. Some people were traumatized. Some people were, you know, had to get additional help because they were made to recount. And some of the town councilor didn't appreciate it because it doesn't impact them. I could care less what they think. I'm sorry to say that we elected them into the office and um, they serve us. And um, so I don't have any problem with the, with the work they did on, on, under the circumstance. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Owen. Yeah, and I'm in agreement uh, with Ms. Pat too, because as Ms. Pat was was talking, I was thinking more about it, and that was something too that I now you know kind of um, thinking back on it, I do remember just kind of like always the questions about oh why don't you have more data? Why don't you present more information? When it was wait a minute, the data is there, the information is there. However, because the information was something that you know the town councils and and others felt very uncomfortable with then I think it's something that's not easily digestible, you know, and then therefore you're, you're uncomfortable with it and then you don't know what to do with it. But for me, the data and the information they presented were very clear. And they actually did an extraordinary amount of work given not only because we were in a pandemic, but the fact that we gave them no time. I mean, there was no time. And then again, this would be the situation that they'd be under again, but they proved that they could do a lot with a short amount of time. You know, so that's why for me, I'm kind of like, I don't, I don't like to work off of conjecture, you know, or just rumors and stuff like that. My thing is, where are the facts? I know the facts in terms of what they did and that they, they did a, a very good job. I don't know the facts in terms of they didn't do a very good job or that, you know, you know, besides making people feel nervous because they were presenting things that, yes, uh, is reality and are going to make people feel uncomfortable and it's dealing with people's, um, you know, reality that, you know, like, you know, people of color and BIPOC people who we feel uncomfortable every day, you know, and that's our realities and we have to live with that, you know. Um, so, so for me, again, unless, you know, someone brings forward some, some, some real hard facts here, evidence facts saying that they didn't do a good job or they did something that, you know, wasn't okay. I don't have any issues with moving forward with 7th Gen, especially since we already have a relationship with them. For me, they did a very good job and we, you know, we need to move forward with uh, time being the essence. 
Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Um, Ms. Owen and then Ms. Pat. For me, I thought what the disconnect was, and I could be wrong, but I thought this was discussed like probably like a month or a couple months ago, was um, having consultants that had a legal background so that we could look into um, mutual aid, police contracts, union contracts, and policies and procedures. So I, I think I think Seventh Gen did an excellent job for the first part of our charge, but what I'm worried about is if um, the town manager is going to find that their experience aligns with what we're asking in, IF, in the second IFB that we have. Thank you. Ms. I, Owen. I thought that that was the concern. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Uh, Ms. Pat and then Mr. Vernon Jones, if you still um, had your hand up. I just want to add one more point. Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, Mr. Ross for raising this because um, I'm glad that you actually did it, you know, so that we have opportunity to discuss it in public. So another issue was, I could tell that um, some of the counselors were uncomfortable with the amount that was paid to them, but they didn't have any problem paying similar amount to a consultant that will help with business um, recovery of businesses downtown, which is actually benefiting the uh, home, um, land owners and you know commercial um, building owners the bid and they didn't have any problem approving more than hundred thousand dollars to fix the front of the um town hall they didn't have any problem to approve some money for dog park should i go on and so the society is used to shipping by for folks like we don't deserve you know, our skills and talents. That's where that is coming from too. We have to beg for the second part of the project. I want people to just think about this for a second. Imagine our group are mostly white people. Our task, the, the, the help we're asking for will, will cost more than 200K or even more than 100K. And in terms of legal aspect of the work we're looking for, and I can speak for 7 Gen, I will hope that they can subcontract uh, with people with legal expertise. I, you know, they started the work and I'd like them to complete it. If, we, if, if, if this group were mostly white people, town councillors will, will not be having any concerns because I've never had them have any concerns about other consultants and uh, researchers in town that have done some work for them. I just have to put it out there. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones, and then Ms. Owen and Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I do want to be clear. I had no problem with the uh, research methodology, the findings, or the boldness of the recommendations from Zevin Jen. I, I, that's, that's not my issue. Um, I think the question of whether legal expertise um, whether we get more mileage if we paid for it directly than if we had seven gen contracting it is worth at least thinking about. Um, and I don't, I don't want us just to keep the, um, those with a white supremacist mentality happy. That's, that's not, I think that that can never be our goal. Uh, we've got to make the best recommendations we can get the best information and make the best recommendations we can for the BIPOC community in Amherst. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, Ms. Owen and then Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I think um, just another thing too, like I think no matter what consultants we have, the town council is going to feel some type of way about our recommendations and they're going to feel uncomfortable. And I think the way they treated 7th Gen, 7th Gen was just an example of that. I think 7th Gen did a great job um, and I think that was just one way of them trying to dismiss our recommendations. And I think going forward, that could be an issue with any consultants we hire. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Uh, Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Pat. Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I wanna separate the two issues what Mr. Vernon Jones brought up and then what Ms. Uh, Owen brought up because what Mr. Vernon Jones brought up is that, you know, some town councilors were not comfortable with 
you know, some of what they did or what they presented. That's a whole, that kind of goes towards what Ms. Pat was talking about, which is white supremacy and them not feeling uncomfortable and not really wanting to deal with what the data and what the facts spoke about, right? That's a whole different issue than what, what you're bringing up, Ms. Owen, which is, okay, well, do they have the expertise for the second part of the charge in specific to what it is that we need them to do. That's a whole different ball game, right? That's not, that's why for me, I don't want us to conflate the two. I want us to be very clear that, you know, for me anyway, I want to be very clear that I shoot down <laughs> whatever it was that the town councilors were bringing up uh, because, you know, I don't agree with that, you know, unless again, you know, some, some facts, some hard facts were being brought up about that. Now, in terms of seventh gen being able to do what it is that we need, my, my recommendation or my suggestion would be, Let's ask them, you know, if we're okay with it, if we're okay with the work that they've done, if we've been happy with the work that they've done, they already have a relationship with us. They've done uh, very good work for part A and now we need them for part B and we need um, consultants quickly. What we need to do is kind of, you know, figure out the scope again, share it with them and let them say whether they can do it or they, they can't. If they can't do it, then yes, we move on to the next. And and I think what we want to do is keep thinking, right? Uh, uh, obviously, uh, another uh, um, researcher to have another agency um, as, a, as a backup or even maybe one or two as backups, right? But I, I don't think it would be a bad thing to just approach them, let them say that they can't do it, you know, as opposed to us ruling them out. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Ms. Pat? So, <clears throat> I mean, I raised some in Jen, I didn't discuss anything with anybody. I just felt that logically with, you know, saving time, that's, you know, the right thing to do. And we cannot shy away from, you know, criticism. It doesn't matter. You know, not everybody is going to be happy with our recommendation. People, some people will like it, some people will not like it. Even if we get, you know, legal um, researcher, you know, with legal background, some people may still not be happy with the recommendation. It doesn't really matter. We just have to, you know, uh, do the right thing as a group is the way I say it, rather than, you know, trying to worry about if the town count, I could care less. We elected them into that office. It's not always guaranteed. I could care less about what they think. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Owen? Um, is the group okay with me and Alicia reaching out to 7th Gen so we can get the ball rolling on this? Or should we refine um, the IFB5 document before we approach them? I think, um, I don't know. I think we would have to, I think it would be important as for our group to revisit the IFB5, even if it's just very quickly so we can see if there's anything we can take out of it. Because also just to keep in mind that we're going to be asking them that if they're um, willing and able to also be doing this for under $10,000. So I think to refine it to exactly what we need and nothing more would be very helpful. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones and then Ms. Ferreira. I'd be very comfortable with our co-chairs proceeding in whatever way you think is advisable. I think before we spend a lot of time on something, it would be worth finding out where we stand with the town manager. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time crafting something that he's then going to reject. Um, so if you can kind of get the parameters from him before we do any more work on it and figure out, how, I, don't, I, don't want to, I don't want a lot of delay on this. I think it's important we move forward. And then um, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I, I'm in agreement with Mr. Vernon Jones. I think since you all are meeting with Mr. Bachman tomorrow would be just to kind of give them, give him an idea of where we're going with this, right? That we just want to pick one entity. And, and I don't think it's a bad thing just to say that, you know, we're thinking about, you know, right now, not that we, we've decided, but at least possibly thinking about 7th Gen, um, but to, to ask him if, you know, what does he think about that? Because like Mr. Vernon Jones said, we don't, we don't have time to waste. But if he's on board, I think then, yeah, the next step would be for you all to just share that IFB, whatever document, I forget the name of it, but just send that to us. And then we could just kind of, you know, provide some edits and then we can go from there. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Um, okay, so I think that I'm in agreement. If you all are also in agreement with that, I think that's a good path 
for Brianna and I to gauge um, Mr. Bockelman's um, where he wants us to go with this or where he's thinking this will go and if that aligns with what we're requesting um, and then we can present it to you all the IFB and then follow up with seven gen um, so if that is okay with everybody I think Brianna and I will move forward with that and we sort of so I think this conversation actually started as um, we were looking at the community policing or sorry we changed the name to um, Sorry, I didn't write it down, so I can't repeat it, but we changed the name. So we were looking at that topic and um, this came up in terms of the question of timeline because we were looking at the ability to have a consultant and how we would structure the rest of our work. So I just wanna bring us back to that conversation. I know we were tabling the, um, the aspect of policing till next week or, or the following two weeks while we can all do some more research. Um, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, in terms of, well, I guess two things. I think it was a follow up in terms of what Ms. Pat said in, in, in terms of like, you know, kind of having the timeline. I guess the, for the traffic um, portion of it, I, I, the, the recommendations around, you know, traffic stops and things like that, I think we want to, you know, you know, possibly pick a date when we can come ready, you know, like, you know, you can resend that document that Ms. Pat and Ms. Ms. Owen had started working on. Maybe I'm thinking even like for the 26th, the meeting of the 26th, we could revisit it then. Um, you know, you can share that document. We can add any edits, do the rest of the readings that we need to do for that, you know, for the 26th meeting. But then in terms of community policing, you know, I, I know Mr. Vernon Jones, you said that, you know, we need to look at some recommendations around that. Um, I'm still not necessarily sold, and I've I've done the reading on the new era of public safety. I'm still not necessarily sold on 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 recommendations around community policing. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Um, you know, I guess I could be convinced otherwise if I see some some good recommendations, but I I, I just don't know. Besides what like Ms. Pat has said, which was, you know, doing a whole healing piece and and things like that. Um, I'm, I'm just not trusting that whatever we put down for community policing would actually happen and would happen the way we want it to happen as, you know? So, so I, you know, I, I don't know, uh, but I guess we, we could revisit that and have more of a conversation. I know I would not be the person to write any recommendations for that because like I said, I don't even know <laughs> if I would write any recommendations for it, but I guess I'm open to discussing it further. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Pat, and then Ms. Owen. So my, my approach, um, regardless what we call it, um, so Mr. Ross is suggesting com community police relations and ending over policing. To me, it doesn't matter the title we call it. It's not something I'm interested in working on because I think the goal, and I can't speak for all BIPOC folks, is strategy to reduce police interaction involvement, whether it's positive or negative. The less interaction we have with the police, the better for us, for people of color, and I, I'm not speaking for everybody. I mean, if it's something we think we want to have the consultant do or something like that. It's not a topic I'm overly excited on doing. And it's actually, you know, I don't want to feel traumatized by it. By it. I do not want involvement with the police, I'm sorry. I don't want them community policing my neighborhood. I don't want it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um. I'm not trying to use this as a way to get community policing back in. I absolutely agree that our top priority is reducing interactions between the police and the BIPOC community. However, we are still going to have a police department. They are still going to have some interactions with the BIPOC community. Uh, and I'd like to see us have some recommendations about, about those interactions. Um, but I, I'm not, I'm not advocating for community policing by any means, um, but we've raised some issues in our earlier report and people are looking for us to, to say something about it. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones, Ms. Owen, and then Ms. Ferreira. 
One thing that I'm really worried about after um, what I read in the seventh gen report is this idea of sector-based policing, especially with our resident oversight board. For me, I want pe members of the community to feel comfortable to apply to be on the resident oversight board and retaliation is a huge thing. And just thinking out loud, I'm thinking about in my neighborhood, how there's a, a cop across the street from me all the time, probably the same officer. And I'm just thinking about what that retaliation would be from people applying to be on the resident oversight board. So I think we should um, try to have some sort of conversation on maybe what reactive policing would look like in Amherst instead of just police presence in neighborhoods, initiating stuff, or a conversation like that before the resident oversight board gets started. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Ms. Moyston? Just to be clear, I just want to make sure, are you saying revisioning and reimagining what the police department looks like now, you know, moving forward? Is that what you just said or? Um, I was more referring to like, I don't know, to reactive policing. Like one of the things that in the seven gen report was that police initiate calls and are initiating stuff. And I think it's from all of the police presence in Amherst. For me, I live in North Amherst. There's so, there's so much there's so much of the Amherst Police Department here. And then like two miles down the road, there's a, there's the UMass PD. Um, I think reducing police presence and also instead of them being posted up to leave the police station when they're called and not just wait. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. But so can I just ask, do we think about, because the PD is here, even if we reduce them, they're still here. And so there'll still be interactions at some point with someone do we think about what it would look like to revision or reimagine what the PD would look like? Um, Ms. Pat and then Ms. Ferreira. So, you know, if we look back from part one and even the part B we're going to be um, back, we're tackling, we're kind of like the recommending how we envision a PD should look like. That's how Chris program came about, about the resident we met with last night wanted the traffic control uh, report to include protocols when police interact with a uh, resident, for example. That is, even though we would like to recommend non-armed, non-police to handle traffic control, but if the town refuses our recommendation, say that the police will continue to do the traffic control, there has to be protocol of how that will happen. Do drivers have rights? And so on and so forth. And also, um, I think the only thing that will move me is to have concrete uh, uh, commitment from the town manager that there will be um, healing done. And I would like, you know, Dr. Barbara Love to handle the, um, that's the word that she used. We need to heal first, you know, before talking about um, community policing or whatever name we want to give it. People are hurting and we can't just like ignore that and then said, oh, this is what we would like, you know, community policing to look like. It's not going to fly. I mean, we, 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 we're talking about people's real lives, people who have had, a, you know, direct experience with the APD. This is no joke. So I would like to, to get commitment that there will be money spent to have people with expertise to do some, um, vision, it, what, there's something that Dr. Barbara called it, you know, to do it for the town, maybe next year or whatever. And then we can talk about community policing when people feel that they're, they're there. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I mean, you know, when we're talking about this stuff, you know, and again, I'm, I'm going to keep using community policing. I'm sorry if it's a version. I know we need to change that name, but 
you know, right now in terms of this conversation, I'm just going to use community police policing. I mean, you are right, Mr. Vernon Jones. I mean, we are going to have police. And according to Mr. Barkerman and, 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 and others in town council, we're going to have, we're, we're actually hiring for vacancy for the police, right? So instead of reducing, well, uh, you know, police, they're, they're maintaining or are going to be increasing. And that's what Mr. Barkerman even recommended was an increase in the police. So that's, that's the part that really... <laughs> There's no trust, right? Let, let me be clear, there's no trust. And that's why there's, there's my resistance right now in terms of talking about community policing. Yes, there is a need. And yes, we are gonna to have to say something and write something, but I need, it needs to be out, out of the box. It can't be, I mean, some of the stuff that I saw in, in like an era of public safety, it sounds great. It's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? But you need trusted people in those in, in that those positions to make that happen. And there are, I don't trust any of those folks in, in, in the town right now. I don't trust Mr. Bachman, you know what I'm saying? To do any of, of what we would write down in terms of recommendations. So what I'm saying, and that's why I feel uncomfortable is like, we need to think really creatively, right? We need to really think out of the box. We really need to kind of, you know, you know, think differently in terms of whatever recommendations we're going to make, because I'm not going to make recommendations thinking that folks like Mr. Bachman and others are going to put those things into place, because I don't trust them to put those things into place. I want to make it clear again. Let's say it again. I don't trust them, to, you know, so I don't want to make recommendations just to make recommendations too. To, to make everybody feel good that we made some recommendations also, you know what I'm saying? So so that's the part that is kind of like, and we do, and I, you know, and I hear Ms. Pat, and obviously I, I agree with that. We have to think about what's gonna happen on the ground, right? With people's lives, with people in, in, in you know, in, 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 in their neighborhoods and stuff like that, in our neighborhoods here in Amherst, what is happening there? What's gonna happen on the ground, you know? And so for us, if we make recommendations that then, don't fall, don't get followed through or it gets twisted and changed and things like that, we're going to lose credibility too. So that's why I'm saying we need to give a lot of thought to this, um, to, to really think this through before we start putting pen to paper. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Um, Ms. Owen and then Mr. Vernon Jones. One thing that really stood out to me at the meeting last week with the League of Women's Voters was um, the declaration of racism that the Board of Health is working on. Um, I did get a chance to read it, and I think that maybe one way we could collaborate with another group is to ask them to include the healing in re-envisioning policing, because another thing I don't want to happen is I feel like the town council picks and chooses which one of our recommendations they're going to implement, and I feel like if we were to work with a different group, it, we might have a better chance of it getting somewhere. And in their second draft, I believe it's being passed next Thursday or this Thursday, um, toward the end, one of the things they're asking for is a comprehensive community assessment. Oh, okay. So another group is thinking about it. That's good. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. So we've mentioned this um, healing and visioning process that Dr. Love recommended. Uh, I've been sort of assuming that we had an agreement that we were going to include that in our next report. Um, is that something we can decide now that yes, we're definitely going to do that and then? Uh, Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Pat. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we have mentioned it and I think we, we do want to want to um, include it. But I but the thing is to you know what's the extent like for me when I keep on saying reimagining, I'm I'm even thinking like the, the re-envisioning re is not just a healing, right? But this is just me talking right now, right? But I, I still need to think it more in terms of it's not just a healing kind of thing. It's a now this envisioning, which might take months, right? It could even take, you know, more than a year or whatever, yeah. is going to really possibly lay the groundwork for changing you know, what community policing is. So the community is the one that creates the community policing. Mm -hmm. No, not maybe, not even us, you know what I'm saying? But, but it's the community, you know? And when I say the community, I'm not saying the majority white community. I'm talking about BIPOC community, folks that are marginalized, folks that are English as a second language, folks that have disabilities, mental health issues, so on and so forth. 
those are the folks that we need to get through this envisioning process to create possibly you know, some of what needs to happen, right? And we need to have people there, you know, to go through the visioning. So town, the town members and so on and so forth all have to be there, right? So that it's all, uh, you know, everyone creating together as opposed to us putting some stuff on paper that then is never going to go anywhere. So I think this envisioning process is not gonna be as simple as just saying, yes, we're gonna do envisioning with, with Dr. Barbara Love. Yes, that's gonna be, part of it, but what else is gonna come out of it? We need to describe those things because I think that's really the basis that we can grow upon this. That's that's what I'm thinking right now, you know, as opposed to the traditional, let's make recommendations around community police, policing. Thank so, you, Ms. Ferreira. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Ms. Pat. So, you know, a couple of things that, you know, come to my mind is, I know that our group is really pushing for the, um, visioning the healing of our town. It's one thing for us to recommend it. It would be great if the coaches can get a commitment from the town manager tomorrow when you guys meet with him. Is it something that they will support? Because if the um, health department is also wanting community assessment, it's just calling it different names. So that means, you know, it's not just us you know, one in it that are other groups that would like something like this to happen. When we get commitment from, you know, from him, then perhaps, you know, in our recommendation that we want, you know, the whole idea of community policing, what the resident would like to come from the resident themselves from different groups to come up with it. I, you know, I don't know if we can do a good job like us coming up with recommendation for community policing Yes, we have APD in AMES, and yes, you know, um, they will still interact with BIPOC people, but we, you know, I'm not into just making recommendation for the sake of it. We have to go through process. One example that I keep um, using is study circle. I'm not saying it's a, you know, um, killing thing, but what I like about that uh, project was, some people use the experience to create something that is a little bit lasting. For example, radar, where the group recognizes um, uh, staff, teachers in our, in our school system who go above and beyond to support students of color. You know, that's something concrete, for example. And um, what, when I joined that study, circle, I, I had no idea that something beautiful like that would come out of it, that subgroup decided to run with, for example. So um, what I'm trying to say is that let's not waste our time doing community policing, get commitment from the town manager tomorrow that, you know, you say go, we'll put it in the recommendation and said, let, let, let this resident decide what they would like to see as community policing. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. All right, let's get anything that anybody thinks is about community policing off our agenda so we don't have to have this discussion again. Uh, I'm, I withdraw my suggestion that we retitle it and table it. I propose we remove it. Uh, I do think what Ms. Pat mentioned about protocols, uh, about traffic stops is gonna be an important area for us to and it may not be just traffic stops, but traffic would certainly be a lot of it. Uh, and I would like us to try to specify protocols and they can be enforced. Also, my guess is if you try to get a commitment out of the town manager, he's gonna ask us for a bigger, better description of what it is. And my proposal is that you suggest that he go back and listen, watch the tape, watch the recording of Barbara Lowe's pre presentation to our group. Let's let him start there. I mean, we will have to write something eventually, but um, that would be a place he could start. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Pat? And in, um, I must indeed have a nice article about that particular um, meeting. So I'll be happy to forward it to you guys. I saved it. That would be helpful. Thank you, Ms. Pat. 
Um, and so I just wanted to make a few comments also, um, just mostly in regards to Deborah's um, idea of re-envisioning something new. And just the more research that I do, I think all of my, everything's pointing me also in that direction. Um, and so I just wanted to share, these are all things I know you you all know already, but I um, signed up for an ACLU course, Racism in Policing. And some of the things that we talked about this week were the fact that uh, communities of color are underinvested in every single aspect besides policing and punitive programs, and that they really would benefit from life affirming alterations like education, and that those things would be far more successful in reducing crimes and recidivism, like having people have any involvement with the legal system in that kind of way. And we also talked about uh, police reform and how, uh, for example, Minneapolis in 2014 went through an entire huge police reform under the o uh, Obama administration uh, for national impunitive building community trust. And that was just um, years before the murder of George Floyd. So if community, if policing can actually be reformed and if that question of if it actually works it has actually been proven time and time again that it doesn't do anything. And so if we can make recommendations that are outside of police reform, like I don't have an idea in my head of what exactly that would be, but I think we're capable of a, as a group and as a community to be able to come up with what that could be. And so I think that like, look, thinking outside of the box is really where we're gonna need to go with this one. Um, thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, and along those same lines, I think that would be something that we could also also give to the researcher, you know, you know, whoever we end up, that would be something, right, to really kind of hone in because, you know, again, that's going to be key. And, and I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because that would be probably part of the, you know, the kind of background historical reasons why we need to do something different, why we need to reimagine something different and, you know, start with the healing and so on and so forth and, and make sure that the, the community is, is uh, you know front and center? They're the ones running this this whole thing, not anyone else. It's the community. You know, the, the folks who are BIPOC marginalized are the ones that are the main decision makers in terms of how the police are going to interact. You know, with them or whether they're going to interact with them at all. You know, and, and at what point that would happen. You, you see what I'm saying? So I think that um, yeah, that that you know that would be crucial, and obviously. You know, for me, you know, for us to come up with something outside the box, reimagine, re because I think it would be important for us to do that. It would be something good to give to, um, you know, our researcher. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Okay, and so with that being said, I, I think, well, I want to ask to make sure we're all in agreement with putting community or leaving community policing behind at this moment. Um, and that we will start thinking of ideas, alternatives to that idea and that we can share with each other at a future time when we have a little bit more time to think about it and do some more research. Um, so at this time, I would like to move to the next agenda item, which is the resident oversight board. Uh, we did uh, get a really good momentum on that conversation, I think last week. So if we can just go back um, to the membership stipends and consultants, Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I, I felt like the working group offered a lot of guidance for revision of the statement, and I apologize, I did not get time to, to make any of those revisions uh, this week. My intention is to get everything that was said last week um, into the, the document so that next week, hopefully, we could uh, approve something and move toward discussions with the chief of police. That's okay. You do a lot for us anyways. <laughs> yes, thank you, Mr. Vernon thank Jones. You. That is extremely helpful. I'm wondering though, I know uh, the edits haven't been able to be made, which is no problem at all, but um, if we might still be able to have a conversation in regards to, um, well, did we, we came up with a final decision in regards to membership, but stipends, I don't know if that's something we would want to discuss now or, um, Wait for the edits. Ms. Pat? I thought we did already 3K, right? I wasn't sure if we came to a decision on that. I know we talked about a few different things. Uh -huh. I just couldn't recall if we came to a consensus as a group. Um, I thought we did in regards to membership and wording. 
but that would just be something else that um, I think Mr. Vernon Jones said that he would add those edits for next meeting. Did did we come up, did we have a formal agreement in regards to the stipend, Mr. Vernon Jones? I thought we agreed on 3K. Yeah. Ms. Ferreira? Well, I mean, I thought that we had also, I thought we had talked about, I guess, you know, just making sure that 3K would be enough, right? Depending on what it is that they'd be doing in terms of the trainings and travel, like, you know, to and from, you know, the trainings and meetings and so on and so forth. And what hours, I think that that, for me anyway, I think that that would be how we'd be able to justify whatever amount we're saying, whether it's 3K, whether it's two, whether it's four, um, you know, I don't know if we should just say 3K, you know, if we're, if we're not sure that that's the amount that, that it will take for them to do what they need to do. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I think that, the, I think that would be important um, just because there is a question or the idea that not all town committees are stipend or should be stipend or that, that that is like a question that is at hand. So I think it might be helpful to provide some clarification, which shouldn't be needed, but as to why, um, why this number? Um, I, I think that's what Deborah was um, refer referencing and I think that that would be helpful. Okay, and so is that something that we're okay with saying th 3K, but that we would need to figure out exactly what that would account for, how much training that they would need? And are these things that, um, we're going to be deciding before the charge is written. Or do those things come, like do we decide on trainings for the resident oversight board after the charge is written or beforehand? Ms. Ferreira? I mean, again, I think like, just because what, what we went through with part A, right? Which every like every, Sent was basically scrutinized in terms of what we recommended, you know, um, if we're not able to account for why we're, we're throwing out that figure, you know, why are we throwing out 3000? <laughs> Do we have a reason why 3000 is the magic number? Um, you know, but I'm, I'm good with it. If, 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 you know, even for me, right, I guess for me, I'm like, okay, 3000, why, you know, is it because, okay, training, there's 30 hours of training, which I've read in some of the things that a lot of them say 30 hours of training. And then there's gonna be, you know, most likely, you know, three meetings or one meeting per week or, or something like that. There could possibly be a couple of investigations, of, 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 you know, a month or something. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I think it would probably be good. It's, it's obviously, it's not gonna be anything exact, exact but at least a guesstimate to say, okay, that equals the, the 3000 number. Because I have to say, because we, we, we got questions so much about everything that we wrote down. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Pat. So I propose the 3K because from what I heard through Grapevine that the town council, you know, it would not look nice for the governance to make less than the oversight board. That's one thing. The second thing is that this board is going to be dealing with the, one of the most powerful feared institution in our town, APD. I mean, if we're, able, if we're lucky to recruit, you know, BIPOC folks, that would be great. People are putting everything on the line to join the, will be putting everything on the line to join the board. But taliation, even though it will be forbidden, you never know. It, it will be one of the most difficult board to be in if you're a person, if you're a BIPOC person. That alone should justify some sort of stipend. Because you're dealing with police, they're very powerful. They, yeah. You know, there's always the potential of revenge. revenge. They know where we live. 
they they you know if they they want to target you they target some people they will do that so that that's the way i look at it in terms of trainings and stuff i guess i'm not understanding is the training going to be outside amherst or is it going to be during the meeting or during when people are working you know do people want to get compensated for taking time off from work i guess i'm not understanding the do we know the timing when the board members will engage in trainings yeah thank you miss pat i think those were my i also have those questions mr vernon jones yeah i don't think we really know exactly how the training is going to go i assume that it some of it will be addition that it will be in amherst or um you know, online, okay. that some of it will be additional meetings for the purpose of training the board. Some of it may be like national webinars that the board is required to sign into, but, you know, at non, non-work hours. Um, and that it's, but it is going to be, take some time. Uh, but I, I don't think we're talking about having people not, you know, not in the current COVID situation, you know, traveling to something. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and I don't think we're talking, we're certainly not talking about board members paying for, you know, if there's a, you know, I think we should probably have a statement that uh, any fees for training will be paid by the town. So this is really compensation for the time. I, to me, this is compensation for the time of the training, uh, the significant amount of work we expect the board to do. Uh, and we can't, you know, we can't actually predict the number of hours for that. And the fact that an incentive is needed for people to, um, you know, particularly for BIPOC people to take on the, the challenge of deciding to um, assume this responsibility uh, in town. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, and for me though, I know we've, we've had those conversations and possibly, you know, it could have been also when, when I missed some of the meetings, but also obviously in terms of to incentivize uh, BIPOC and, and those who are marginalized to, to, to take part in this oversight board, it would be like, you know, for childcare, for transportation for them to get to, to the meetings, you know, to, you know, uh, you know, to, to buy meals and things like that, you know, when they're, you know, either before or afterwards, uh, after the meetings, um, you know, and, 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 and I don't know, I mean, you're right, Mr. Mr. Brennan Jones, you think that during this COVID time, it'd probably be, um, you know, online, but who knows, right, things are opening up, so it could mean, you know, a conference or something like that, because I envision before this, this board begins, they're going to have to do, just like press folks are going to have to go through all this training before they get out there, the oversight board is going to have to go through, you know, like a, a, a good chunk of time is going to be trainings before they even start looking at a mm -hmm. case or getting complaints and stuff like that. They all have to be trained up. You know, everyone's going to come in. There's going to hopefully the oversight board, they're going to have certain criteria, right, in terms of experience, but they're not all going to be on the same page at that mm -hmm. point, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to need, and then, you know, even what Ms. Moisten has said, they're going to need information around the police department, our police department, the structure, and they're going to need information about how the town works, the hierarchy, all of those things, and then the specifics about how they do their jobs, investigations, so on and so forth, outcomes, discipline. I mean, so they're going to have to do that. And then we got to think about every new board member is going to have to do that training, you know, or something similar to it, because you can't also change it up, you know, and just send them to do other webinars or so on. So, you know, I mean, they all have to be getting the same type of information. And then obviously, you know, every six months or whatever, getting more training so that they're you know, train on what they, 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 they need to know and keep up to date with things. So that's what I, I foresee, you know, it, it's going to be a good chunk of, of time, especially in the beginning or as a new board member when they come on board. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Okay. And so um, I'm wondering how you all would like to go about the stipends and if you think we need to make that decision now.
Because I know uh, Mr. Vernon Jones has agreed to propose these edits, hopefully um, for next meeting. So if we came back to this document at next meeting, would you all be prepared to revisit the stipends then, or would you like to visit it now to be included with the document with the edits for next week? Miss Pat? Oh, I thought we're doing the later to, you know, to include it in the edit. I mean, for what okay. everybody has shared so far, I think it's a strong, um, compelling reason why we're suggesting 3K with that incredible amount of time and incentive for especially BIPOC folks. So I think it should convince the town council. Thank you, Ms. And the town manager. Thank you. Mr. Vernon Jones. My suggestion is that I write a separate document or section that gives the rationale for having a stipend at all and includes all the things we just talked about. I think I got notes on most of it. Um, and that we put in 3,000, but we have this long explanation about stipends. Uh, you know, we, we know what kind of committees you get in Amherst without a stipend. You get almost entirely white. You get, um, you know, a lot of older retired folks. Uh, and that's not the kind of committee that is going to build trust in the police. So it won't, it's not a matter of whether you think it sh they should or shouldn't get money. It will not achieve its goals if yeah. you don't do something different. And that's why we are recommending a stipend. Uh, so I think, you know, write that up and then we put in the 3000 and um, see what it looks like when we get it all together. I did have one other request. I wrote a section about why majority BIPOC. Uh, and I didn't I know- I saw that, yeah. yeah. If, if people have comments on that, uh, I would welcome those in the next couple of days so that if I need to do revisions, um, I can get those comments sooner rather than later. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, okay, so I just want to make sure everyone here is in agreement with the 3K for the stipend. Um, Ms. Owen, Ms. Ferreira, and Ms. Pat, Mr. Vernon Jones, and I um, am also in agreement. So I think um, I am in favor of that re recommendation, Mr. Vernon Jones, of the 3K, and that you write up something in regards to why stipends and that do you, would you like our input on that document as well or just on the um, why majority BIPOC at this time? Well, if if I get it to you in time, I'd love to have feedback, but we'll <laughs> have to see when I get it written. Uh, okay. But for, for right now, the, the why majority BIPOC would be helpful to have any comments on. Okay, great. And so if everyone can uh, revisit this document and get any comments, edits, or suggestions to Mr. Vernon Jones within the next two days? Two and a half. Two and a half? Okay. So is that Saturday or Sunday? Let's see, this is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I think it would be Sunday afternoon. That's, that's not till noon, su noon Sunday. Noon on Sunday. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, great. And then I would like to move to the next part of uh, the agenda, which is the standing committee. And so to uh, check back in with Ms. Pat, I think we were able to get that document out to uh, Mr. Bockelman? Yep. Okay, great. Um, I don't think I saw a response yet, but this is something that Brianna and I can also um, revisit with him at tomorrow's meeting, if that is helpful. Yeah. Okay. And then the uh, next agenda item is subgroup check-in. I want to reserve this time to hear from groups. If there is any other group, I think we actually heard from all of the groups because we, unless there's something else from traffic control that you guys didn't get to go over, but um, I think we actually heard from all of the subgroups already. Mr. Vernon Jones. Just um, on the traffic control, um, I like to, Deborah's suggestion that we set a date, maybe August 26, when we would have a, try to have pretty full discussion. And I wonder if, if people are reading and finding things that are useful, it would be helpful to have those sent to all of us. 
Oh, and Deborah, whatever you're finding as the most useful in your reading, if you could send those to all of us, that would be great. And I, I just say I started an article that I got through to through a link that Brianna had sent us earlier. Uh, it's called Traffic Without Police in the Stanford Law Review. Uh, and I'll, if it's as good as it looks, I'll be sure and send it to everybody. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Owen? I was just gonna say, I think I will go back and look at the traffic control document that me and Ms. Pat have going, because I think I have two, and one of them has the link, and then one of them has a summary of um, New York City's Department of Transportation's report, just so that we can have one document with all of the links, so we're all on the same page for um, August 26th. Great. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you, Ms. Owen. Ms. Ferreira? And also, I think like what you were saying, Mr. Vernon Jones, is good about sending in what we have, but could you resend that document that you and Ms. Pat had worked on? Because then I could just add stuff to that. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Okay, so with that being said, I would like to move uh, Ms. Pat. Yes, Ms. Pat. So are we clear as to when we think Mr. Ross should submit the, over, uh, the oversight board um, document? Are we doing it end of this month? Um, Ms. Like Owen. Sending it to plant manager. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Owen and then Mr. Vernon Jones. I don't know if it would make sense, but I, it might be good if we met with the police chief again after we finish our final version of it and make sure he's on board with it and then bring it to the town uh, manager if the group's in agreement with that. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Mr. Vernon Jones? Yeah, that would be my approach that I get a draft to you in time for you to read before our meeting next week. We can come to agreement next week that then uh, we would take it to the chief, um, you know, a, a follow up to the meeting that Brianna and Alicia and I had with the chief and see if we can get, you know, I mean, the chief may have some pushback on some and we may have to negotiate bits of it, but if we could, if we can reach an agreement with the chief, I'm hopeful that that would then bring the town manager on board. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Pat? Yeah, that sounds good. I like that approach. And um, I think because it's going to be uh, challenging to recruit the socially BIPOC folks, the sooner we, you know, finalize things and, you know, push it to town manager to start recruiting, you know, the better. So. But does end of this month sound realistic to shoot for? Mr. Vernon Jones? I think we could shoot for that, but I don't think we know until we see how the conversation with the chief goes. You know, that, that may be a process and I don't want us to rush that process any fair, you know, we want to succeed in that negotiation. <laughs> sure. Um, yes, Ms. Pat. I don't want us to disband before putting in place. Um, so that, that's where my thinking is coming from. Um, that, you know, that is a oversight board in place, even if it's few weeks overlap with CSWG before we finally disband, yeah. Yeah. Not to give any reason to say, oh, we didn't have, you know, there's not enough time to put this in place because CSWG submitted their recommendation very late. Um, I don't want us to have any gap with the two standing committee. Uh, yeah. But coming on. Yeah. Thank you. Ms. The oversight board and also the um, Community Safety and Social Justice Act Committee. It would be nice for them to, uh, it would be nice to have these two committees in place before CSWG disband, like, you know, at least by October to set it up before we end our charge November 1st. Thank you, Ms. Pat. I think I'm in agree agreement with all of those things. And I think, um, I mean, I do think we need to keep in mind what Mr. Vernon Jones was saying in case there's any uh, pushback or needing to edit or refine the document. But I do think it's a, 
it is um, an obtainable goal to at least aim for the for the end of this month. Um, and that if all things do go smoothly, I think that we can achieve that. So I think we should aim for that, but just be keep in mind that we may uh, come across other roadblocks along the way that we might have to adjust. But I think that that's a good goal to have um, in terms of direction. Ms. Ferreira. Sorry, just unmuting. Um, I guess for me, just so, for clarity again, um, I, 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 when does Mr. Vernon Jones want um, feedback from us? I guess, you know, I, I, I did hear around the, um, what is it? The BIPOC, majority BIPOC. But what about the rest of the document itself? Because the one thing too is that I probably, I would want to get like a Word document because right now it's like PDF and stuff like that. But it would be good to get whatever you have, Mr. Vernon Jones, like in a Word document, and then I could review everything and then send any edits and things like that. Yes, Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I can send the the Word document, you know, before the edits. Uh, I can probably get that out tonight. Um, and if you can get me feedback again by noon on Sunday, um, then then it'll appear in the, you know, in the, uh, in the version I'm able to send you for discussion for next week. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Moyston. So I can send you guys, so the reason why it's in a PDF is because I have to turn it into to a PDF to upload it. So I have the Word version too, and I can just send that to you guys now. It's the one that's dated 727, as you said, without the changes. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moyston. Okay, so, great. Yes, Ms. Pat. So not to be a pain, okay? So next week, we're going to discuss edit that Mr. Ross would do. We're going to discuss it. Then the following week, we're you know, on break, right? And then hopefully we will have a sense of where we are with oversight board document. Do we have enough time tonight or should we table it for next week? Like what other topics do we want to tackle for, for the months of September and October? You know, beside traffic, I mean, we're doing traffic control and we're doing the oversight board. Yes. And we're, you know, we're not going to be touching the community policing because we'll be recommending um, a, a healing for the town. So when we're done with these two major topics, what are we going to be working on in the fall? Uh, Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Allen. Well, I, I so, so traffic control, we had talked about 826 for us to come ready to kind of talk. And then uh, Ms. Bowen's going to share the document that you, Ms. Pat, and her had worked on. Um, hopefully even like if you could send it out today or whatever or, or in the next two days, then we'll have that. Um, but I still think though the community policing, I still, we do need to touch that. I think we need to give that to the researcher because we still want to reimagine, re-envision something different, you know, which is going to include the, the healing, but it's going to kind of build off of the healing. So I think that that's still something that we're going to need to discuss, I think in September, you know, is going to be the community policing, especially with hopefully some new information that the researcher, whoever that ends up being, hopefully seventh gen, but if not, whoever else we end up working with um, can do. So for me, I would like to have that still on, on, um, on the agenda. And then I know we had discussed a while ago and I had said that hopefully that wouldn't fall off the, um, um, or fall through the cracks was around training um, for the police because they still are there. And as we can see, they're hiring more of them, uh, more police. So I, I would like to revisit that too before our, our tenure is, is over. So I was almost thinking, okay. Sorry, yes, Ms. Pat. I was almost thinking like if we get researcher, you know, they should also, you know, work on the training, what it will look like, the, you know, anti-bias training and stuff like that. Um, okay, I forgot the second thing I wanted to say will come back to me. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Uh, Ms. Owen and then Ms. Moyston. 
one of not important I don't I can't I can't um decide whether it's essential like I don't know if I would want the um, consultants to look at this but at some point I think and even if this is I I'm more than happy to do some research on this addressing the mutual aid between the police department because I did with the hiring of the new um officers to fill the vacancy one of the um not excuses, but reasoning was like, oh, we're gearing up for the UMass students to be back. Like, okay, what is the UMass Police Department doing? And I assume they have a significant, like more funding because they're funded through the state. So I think it would be important for a group to learn a little bit more or have more clarity on what the relationship between the Amherst Police Department and UMass Amherst Police Department is to learn what mutual aid really means. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Uh, Ms. Pat. So I just remembered what I, I was going to say. Um, the meeting we had yesterday with the, uh, um, a community member, um, we talked about like, you know, what police do, their typical day, you know, or their typical week. I am clueless what they do. It would be nice to add up for us as a group to research on that or give it to a researcher because I have no idea what they do. I have, I have no concept what they do. So it'd be nice. I don't even know, I don't, I mean, I've read it like the chain of command and how things work, you know, but not, it would be nice to, to have some sort of written document for the benefit of the public. If, if a highly educated prof, retired professor is saying this, it has crossed my mind too. Like, I don't fully, you know, understand the duty of a typical officer. I don't. Thank you, Miss Pat. Um, Miss Moyston. Oh, just a couple of things, Brianna. I like I don't know a lot about the mutual agreement between the UMass and the Amherst PD, except for the UMass PD stays on the UMass campus only, and so all of the folks who live off campus are get have responses from the Amherst PD, not the UMass PD. They don't come out of the UMass district, if that makes sense. That's the only thing I really know about their mutual aid. Um, the other thing is, and I don't, I'm going to try and say this because sometimes I say things and it's A, either confusing or B, doesn't seem sensitive enough and that's not the case. I'm just, so similar to what Miss Pat just said, like we don't really understand what they do on the day-to-day -day basis. If we take A, B, and C out, they're still left there and then they have D, E, and F. And then how does that D, E, and F work with the rest of the community? Does that, um, does that make sense? I think when I asked that question before about revisioning and reimagining what the police department looks like, that's what I was trying to get at. Like okay. after we pull these things out, we still have a PD here. And then, so what is their job and how do we wanna see the changes of those things that they do change? Does that make it make more sense? Because mm -hmm. there's a, I feel like there's this gap of what happens when we pull A, B, and C out and then D, E, and F are left. And then how does that shape moving forward? What does that look like? And, I, and I'm still a strong believer that if, you know, somebody is coming in off the street and they need to go to the Amherst Police Department, that that interaction is, is a good like if they're on the street and they're being harassed or something that they know that they can go into the Amherst Police Department and that's a safe place people need to be able to know that and it has nothing to do with race I'm just saying like they're still there right and, and I and I don't really know what it looks like when they're just still there and you take out traffic and we take out nonviolent crimes right thank you Miss Moisson Miss Ferreira Um, yeah, Ms. Boyson, I think that's what we, that's the whole conversation around like um, healing and re-envisioning is the kind of deal with the fact that they're, they're still there. And obviously like, you know, Mr. Bachman is, is, is hiring, you know, more of them and stuff. So, so we know they're there, you know, and we know there's going to be left there uh, as of right now, um, even though we, we asked for, for them to be reduced. So I think that all of this, and especially that revisioning um, um, portion is going to deal with that what you're asking exactly. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Mr. Vernon Jones. I mean, one of my questions has been how, 
how could each department of the town be a force for undoing systemic racism? How could each department in town contribute uh, to the dismantling of white supremacy? And we're not gonna get a full answer by any means, but if we have any thoughts about that or our researcher can come up with anything about how the police could be a part of such a thing, I think we ought to say so. And that was on our, what was on our list at one point of, you know, what would anti-racist, non-biased policing look like? The other thing that I'd like to have on our agenda is something about uh, transparency and public access to data. Um, I think some of the stuff about stops and arrests and all of that should be on an easily accessible public dashboard that anybody can read that gets updated. I mean, I don't know, we can talk about how often, you know, maybe it's once a month, I don't know, I don't know what it is. But I think it'd be good for us to make a recommendation about what it is we'd like to see and how frequently and how transparent. Now, how quickly that can happen, you know, we learned from the chief that there's something about their, the people managing their current software are going out of business in a couple of, you know, are widely used by police departments, are going out of business in the next couple of years. And every police department is going to have to do something else. So we may not get what we want right away, but our input might make a big difference in, in what comes next, if we can be clear enough and strong enough about what we think ought to be there in terms of transparency and access to data. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Owen? Another thing that I'm thinking about just when Deborah brought up um, looking at the training is maybe looking at who the police is currently, who they have partnerships with, who the CIT training is through. Um, because I know in the implementation meetings, partnering with CSO was something that came up. So seeing where, who is, who is running their trainings, who are, they par who are their community partners and stuff like that might be interesting to explore. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Ms. Ferreira? Um, I just have a clarifying question for, for Mr. Vernon Jones. So I guess when you were saying about, you know, anti-racist and unbiased policing, and you said about the town, I guess, so So are you saying for us to expand it? Because I mean, obviously just dealing with the police in and of itself is enough in terms of, 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 of no, no, right. anti-biased and anti-racist. So I guess I'm, that, that's why I'm asking a clarifying question. No, my we're not going to do anything more than police. Oh. My hope is that we might be able to eventually frame some of it so that what the kinds of recommendations we make about the police or the kinds of questions we ask over time get asked and implemented in every other department. Oh, okay, you know. gotcha, gotcha. Not that that's our job. Oh, okay, gotcha. We might think about, you know, we might frame this as you know, here's what we think should happen to the police and a similar process should happen throughout the town government. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Ms. Pat. Okay. So if we can like summarize what we'll be working on in the fall, September and October. Ms. Marston, did you get the notes? I didn't. <laughs> did I get the notes from tonight's meeting? Well, no, 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 no. Like um, some of the brainstorming um, that we just did, like the mutual aid, you know, oh. your mask uh, and planning, like topics we were throwing out that we would like to work on in the fall. Yeah, like okay. I took some notes. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. I, I, I can write down everything that. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we can continue the conversation next week. Does I would like to have an idea as to what our group is thinking that we should tackle uh, September and October, maybe leave two weeks time for us to summarize and edit and look and revise you know, our final document. Do we have date? We're, we're, we're shooting to submit our final report. It's going to be November 1st or before November 1st. 
So I actually am not sure. Did we, Ms. Moyston, is our official end date for this group November 1? I believe so. That's like he just said November, but he didn't necessarily change it from, sep you know, how it was September 1. He didn't necessarily say November 30th, but um, that's something you can ask him tomorrow to confirm, yeah, but I'm pretty it. sure it was the first. Yeah, I had heard November 1st. So that's what yeah, I heard too. Yeah, he said November 1st. Yeah. Because I had actually asked him if he was willing to put us longer than that, and he said no, November 1st. <laughs> Okay, well, and, well, well, you can you can you can confirm with him tomorrow, or or ask him if there's a different date. But you know. Okay, and will we be doing like some sort of presentation, like we did with the first part of our work? So should, I mean, we all like to see if we have a date for that. Yeah. Yeah. For me, that's what I would want. Like tomorrow, yeah. when you talk to him, um, uh, Alicia and Brianna would be to ask, like, okay, so by when should our recommendations be done? Like, when do we uh, present them to the town council? Since, you know, especially if he says, okay, November 1st is the, the, the last date that we're going to be working before the oversight, uh, yeah. I mean, the standing committee comes into play, then, you know, by when we need to you know, present the recommendations and all of that. Because it's probably going to be like, you know, I'm thinking like probably the month b before or something like that, or a couple of weeks beforehand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Ms. Moyston? So the council has, I think that their meeting September 27th is already pretty full, but they have an October 4th, 2021 meeting that maybe that would be a good opportunity, which means you would present to the town manager the week or two weeks before that. Did they have anything at the end of October? They Did have, they um, the October 18th is their next meeting after the 4th. Yeah, it sounds so they like have, that's, yeah, I think we should shoot for the 18. Yeah. 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 Okay. So and what is the process? So what is the process of putting us in our agenda? So the town manager will contact town council? Okay. Mm -hmm. So then tomorrow, if you can, if you can ask him, if we are shooting for October 18th to meet with the town council by when we be presenting to him our recommendations. So would that be like the week before or two weeks before? So then that would give us the, the, these deadlines to work from. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ferrer. We will bring those concerns to Mr. Bachelman tomorrow and try to get some answers to bring back to you all for next week. Yes, Ms. Ferrer. So I guess uh, that's, that was a good question that Ms. Pat asked. Like in terms of my notes, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, what I have is re-envisioning uh, policing, you know, Quote unquote, you know, in parentheses, community policing, but, and I kind of added, you know, with a focus of um, anti-racist, non-biased, you know, policing, I think that would be the way I would frame it. And then um, training for the police, looking at mutual aid, and then transparency to data easily, you know, like how, how can we present um, the, the data easily in a transparent way? I mean, those were the, the main ones that I had on. Was there anything else? No, that's everything I, I had. Yeah. Also, continue the conversation in terms of our timeline. That was the only other thing that I had that you didn't. And for next week's, I have the um, revisit edits on the resident oversight board, why majority BIPOC, and why stipend. But yeah, everything. yeah, I was just I was just focusing on September October. Yeah, that's but everything yeah. I had also. I I had mentioned I had mentioned about what a typical day looks like for. Oh, yes. For an officer. Okay. A typical week or what, you know, the chain of command, what, what they do. Okay. That's something we can give to the researchers, right? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Pat and Ms. Ferreira. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, I'd like to hold open the possibility that we might have some other policy recommendations as we talk about traffic protocols, for instance, it may turn out that we think about a protocol about something else. Uh, there's, uh, you know, there's some research that says police officers are more dangerous if they're working too many hours and, you know, should there be a limitation there? There might be some things like that that come along that we might also want to have other policy recommendations. I'm not suggesting we do a complete review of policy. But as we get into these other things, we may identify some things that we want to recommend. Sounds good. 
So we have enough. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Yes, Mrs. Pat. So I guess next week we prioritize the topics we want to, you know, pursue for September and October, right? Are we going to do all this? All these items? Or? Um, no, I have most of them split up, uh, some for next week and some we like some things like the coming back to the conversation in regards to community policing for we left gotcha. that for September and then traffic control we said we were going to look at at the 826 meeting. Yeah. So okay. yeah, I, I kind of blocked it off here in the notes that I have under different dates, but that we would have to revisit the conversation in regards to a timeline. Okay. okay. I'm feeling I'm feeling much better today, like you know, so that we have some sort of outline of what we're doing. Thank you, Miss Pat. Um, Miss Moiston. I just wanted to make sure that everybody had the latest IFB copy. Are we like last I we just talked about that and you guys said you were gonna use that. So I just wanted to make sure because aren't we gonna revise send it out to everyone and have it revised. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody had a copy of it. But, yeah. So, okay. Sorry, Mr. Vernon Jones and then Ms. Pat. Am, am I right that the document title was IFB6? I think that's the, the latest one that it appears that I have. I think so. I'll just send it just in case I rather. Thank you, Ms. Moisson. That would be helpful. I just sent you guys like five emails in yeah. a row. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, Ms. Pat and then Ms. Ferreira. So to be clear, we're not going to do anything about the IFB document until we hear back from our co-chairs, correct? Okay. Right. That was my question, so. Yeah. Thank you all. Um, so we do have one more agenda item. And that is the CRESS implementation follow-up. So uh, Brianna and I and Ms. Moisson did meet with the implementation this morning. So I just want to take a little bit of time to share um, significant updates from that meeting. Um, so first, uh, we have sent out our grant application for the Department of Health grant that we were speaking about last week. Um, and we did submit that application with the collaboration of the African Diaspora Mental Health Association. Um, and so uh, they have given us a letter of commitment and we are hoping that we will qualify for that grant opportunity, but just wanted to let you all know that we have um, officially applied to that grant for CRESS. Um, Sorry, I'm just looking through my notes here and just trying to pick through. So LEAP, the LEAP contract is still in negotiation, um, but because we didn't get the technical support that we had applied through the Harvard, Harvard Kennedy grant, um, that we are updating that contract because we're trying to add more of the techno technical support that we had previously hoped to get from the other program to the LEAP contract. And so that they're hoping that that will be finalized within the week but that LEAP has already started looking at some of the APD data. Um, Scott Livingstone did report that there were some data that they were unable to access through the APD themselves and LEAP has already been in contact with their software team and is in um, the process of collecting um, that data. So LEAP will be hopefully within the next two weeks looking at that data and um, we have dispatch policies and evaluation, and they will give us a list of deliverables within about a month and a half. I think it says a turnaround for LEAP evaluation. Um, sorry, Brianna, feel free to... Yeah, I can jump in. <laughs> yeah, I just have so many notes. I'm trying to see which things go together. No, it's okay. Um, another thing like to go with LEAP, um, we did start the job descriptions, but we, we agreed as a team that once we have the data from LEAP, we'll have a better idea of the skill set we're going to need from the responders. I know in our report, in our conversation, we talked about emphasizing lived experience, um, people that have behavioral health backgrounds and such. And once we have that data, we'll be able to um, 
craft the responders positions. Um, Ms. Pat, myself and Alicia have been working on the job description for the director, but it's not at a point where it's, I would even say like a draft I'd be comfortable showing you guys. It's a work in progress. <laughs> um, and the grant that we applied for, um, one of the things that we also have to do it, to prepare, to anticipate that we get it, is write a job description for a project manager for CRESS, along with the director. So that's something we're working on. And the project manager would work on things like the collaboration between um, the police department, the dispatch, the medics, the fire department, um, that type of thing. Whereas the director would be doing the training and the administrative stuff. Yeah, I think those that we're we're talking about other things and working on a timeline, but those are the main things that are sort of working and in motion right now. Um, yes, Mr. Vernon Jones. I saw in the email some reference to Mary Beth leaving. Mm. What can you tell us about that? Yes, so uh, Mary Beth has resigned from her position. Um, so I think next week we do have another implementation meeting scheduled for next Thursday, but that will be her last implementation meeting. Um, she just has accepted a job else, elsewhere. And so we, we plan to continue to move forward with the implementation team. Um, and we will also discuss that more with Mr. Bockelman tomorrow in terms of what, what we would need in order to move forward successfully. Yes, Ms. Pat. So, um, did you guys, thank you uh, to both of you. Uh, Ms. Marston, were you there today? Yes. Okay. Thank you guys for your time. Were you, guys, were you guys able to come up with the public forum? Yeah? Well, I think that we did discuss that in, in the sense of um, community outreach, outreach plan. And okay. so, I th you know, it's all about timing. So I think once we, um, get the director position going a little bit more, then we'll start with the the open forums for the community to get their input on what they would like to see the Crest Responder Program be. And we won't be able to do it. It'll be too late to do it once the director comes, I would think, like we this is something we should do as soon as possible. Yeah, I think, well, yes, but also I think we're, we talked with Mr. Bockelman about doing it on an ongoing basis so that we can set up one so that we get um, guidance from the community, but then also give them opportunities for feedback so that at various stages throughout the implementation process, we can say, okay, we have this idea that we think is concrete and ready to go. Let's present it to the community and get some feedback. Um, and so that we would also hope to build that in along the way so that there, and that there will be time for the director to also engage with the community while they build, because they're going to be really managing the team. So I think that they'll also need to engage in the community and what the community's expectations are. Um, so I think it's going to, we want the public outreach and the community engagement to be ongoing, but we haven't set final dates for those things yet. And then I don't, Alicia, Brianna, and Miss, or Miss Alicia, Miss Brianna, and Miss Pat, um, if, if you guys can revise the job descriptions for, um, I'm trying to think of what it was. If we can post those before I go on vacation in August, that would be great. So I go on vacation on August 19th, so if we can post those, the final, that either that day or the, on the 18th. So that would mean that the three of you guys would need to work together with the revisions and then I will bring it to the HR director for revisions there and to put it into the templated format of our job descriptions and then bring it back to you guys um, for review and then post on the 19th. So if we can somehow have all that done and the HR director's on vacation next week. Okay, thank you, Ms. Moiston. Ms. Pat? Um, wouldn't we want to have the CSWG take a look at it too before we post it? Well, that's what, I, that's what I That's what I was saying is bring it okay. back to you guys. Okay. So it would have to come back at next Thursday's meeting. Yeah, 
Um, thank you, Ms. Boyson and Ms. Owen. Yeah, the, the draft that um, Alicia and I brought to the meeting today, it just had so many revisions and we made revisions during the meeting. So I'll make them and then we can share them next week so everyone can take a look at them. And everybody, it was a fantastic job. Thank you, Ms. Moyston. Um, yeah, so I think we, the, the hope with that is that Brianna and I will be able to get those revisions for the next implementation meeting, which is next Thursday morning, so that at that meeting, we can sort of solidify it with the implementation team and then share it with you all later that night to get feedback. Um, okay, Brianna, do you have anything else to share or Ms. Moyson, any important takeaways from the implementation meeting that I might be missing out on? I don't think so. And I think next week we'll have more to report back to the group because we're also going to talk with Mr. Bockelman about um, the implementation team and how that's going to look going forward without Mary Beth. Okay. Yes. Um, Ms. Pat? So... This is not for anybody to respond, but why are our high level administrators leaving their jobs. We have our health department director leave abruptly and we have our senior center, is that what it's called? Senior center director leaving. That's it, what's going on? Um, So I have a question about the, um, the BPH uh, grant application that we put in, that the town put in. Do we know when to expect some you know, feedback from BPH? Yes, so we don't have a final date, but I think she said that October, sometime before October, because October was the date that they planned to disperse the funds, but we don't know which day we would know whether or not we were selected, but it would be sometime before October. And the project manager job description. Uh, so um, I'm assuming it would be a temporary position, right? Because when the grant money goes out, that's it. Is that? I think, is this a multi-year? This is a multi-year. Multi-year. I think, yeah, and it requires that we have that position as well. Uh, so I honestly don't know. I think that though that may become one of our measures of efficacy, like when we're measuring the program um, and evaluating it, that we would make the decision at that point once the if that funding doesn't continue and that requirement is no longer there. I think if we see that position still necessary that it might continue, but I think that that would be something that we address at the evaluation at that time. Because at, at this point, if we do receive the grant, we're committed to it at least for a few years. Last question and I'll shut up. So with the dispatch policies, you know, your group is discussing, is, that, is there any mention of ever creating uh, press dispatches? At all? So we did bring that up to Mary Beth. I know it, things may be different because she won't be in charge moving forward, but we have spoken with her about that and brought up the community's concerns. And so I think really for them, it was um, an issue of funding. And so that if we are able to secure these grants and at a, an appropriate level of funding, that then we may be able to readdress that question and it may be a, a more realistic um, thing that we can achieve, but that we're waiting to see what type of grant funding we'll be able to access because we, we currently haven't retained any grant funding. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. Just wonder if it'd be possible to get a, include in the LEAP contract a recommendation from them around the uh, dispatch or, or a, a plan about how it could be done if we had the funds or whatever would make the most sense there. They just seem to have the best overview of things across the country. Yeah, I'm looking back at my notes from the meeting and it says that um, LEAP is in the LEAP contract. They're including things in regards to dispatch policies and evaluation. Uh, so I don't know what specifically in regards to dispatch, but I know that there is something in there that they are going to be looking into. So I, I think that that, um, 
that ask would be completely in reason. So I think yeah. that's something we, we just, can just sneak the word staffing in that list as well. Thank you, Mr. Verna Jones. Ms. Ferreira. Uh, I just uh, wanted to rehear what uh, Ms. Bri what Brianna, what you had said about the, uh, what's the difference against between the direct and the project uh, manager? So the project manager is going to be doing, um, working with the police department, the fire department, um, dispatch, the dispatchers, and be doing the collaboration from what I understand. Whereas the director is going to be working on um, creating and implementing the trainer, the training for the responders, um, the administrative stuff working Monday through Friday, um, I, I guess like in office stuff and um, hiring the responders and that type of thing from what I understand. Ms. Moyston and Alicia, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I think basically, I think the director has a lot of responsibilities because that would also include like data management. Also, if they would have the, um, if there, we needed to secure more grants moving forward, that they would be in charge of looking for grants um, and those things. And so that the project manager was sort of just more of a collaborative effort, sort of um, bringing all of those things together for the director. Um, Ms. Pat and then Ms. Moyston. So well, that's exactly, I'm glad that, you know, this group is tackling that because when I hear about director of a department, it's more of administration. And so, you know, for all uh, items that you guys listed, that's what the person should be doing, not necessarily clinical stuff. I mean, if the person have clinical background, that's a plus, but a director, executive director, whatever one of call the person, it's mostly administration, data management, training. That's, you know, manager, that's what they do. But the responders, it would be nice, you know, with lived experiences, some um, professional um, work experience and things like that would be good for the responders. But the, for the director, administration purely. And yeah, so what I'm trying to say is the job description that we're working on will need to be really revamped very, very well. Because I alluded to that when I when I was editing it. It has to be administration, that's you know, training, personnel, you know, stuff like that. Yes, thank you, Miss Pat. Miss Moyston. I was just gonna say that um strategic planning is in there too, but also um I kind of see the program manager as the assistant director. I mean, it's it's kind of equivalent to the same where they're going to be taking the stuff that, you know, a, a busy director can't do on the day-to-day -day basis to make sure that things are still operating smoothly, which I think is a great idea, you know, um, to have for this position, any new position too, right? Especially if they don't, I don't know if admin support is coming. I'm not quite clear on that or not, but oh no, part-time, correct? I think we hope so. Um, Ms. Pat? So the town council and the town manager will not admit this. The CSWG, we knew this already and we did recommend, to, we recommended, um, didn't we have assistant director for CREST program? So we're just like using the word project manager. It doesn't matter what we call it. There has to be an assistant helping director because too much work on the person's plate to, to handle. So it's like, instead of acknowledge, acknowledging CSWG of what we recommended, we're not going to get credit for it. So I want to put it out in the public so that when people are listening, you know, go back to watch this, they will say, aha, DPH want them to have a project manager, aka assistant director that CSWG already recommended. Does that make sense to people? Yes, thank you, Ms. Pat. Yep. At least I'm an employer. I'm a businesswoman, so that's my um, cup of tea. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, okay, and Brianna, Ms. Moisson, uh, just to follow up uh, one more time before I move on, if there's anything else from today's implementation meeting that um, we did not discuss yet. 
Okay. Um, so the next part of the agenda is just for upcoming events. If anybody has anything that they would like to share. I think we have, um, yes, Ms. Weston. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to unmute and mute myself. Sorry about that. Um, so also, I just thought it was really important that we did talk about that if we do not get this grant, that, that we still need to connect and try to bring the African Diaspora Mental Health Association somehow over into the Amherst area. So we still need to, I think that's an important piece. So we still need to stay very connected to them um, in some way. So that's something to, to think about. Um, as well. Thank you, Ms. Moiston. Ms. Pat? So I'm sorry to, to hear and to see uh, Ms. Um, Mary Beth uh, go, but I just wanted to comment how responsive she was last week when I attended the meeting and how quickly, you know, uh, she got into action. That's the kind of um, administrators we want, like listen to BIPOC, what we're saying, take action and not just, you know, agree with us and listen and not do anything. She was quick, boom, 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 boom. And so, you know, sorry that she's moving on, but I wish her the best. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, so I also did want to share here that Mar Marcy Sklove from the League of Women Voters sent us an event for active bystander for a law enforcement conference that will be happening next week. Um, I'm not sure if you all received that email, um, but it looks like it's taking place Thursday, August 11th and Friday, August 12th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m there's a bunch of different events happening throughout the day. So it's not something that you would have to attend the whole day. And we have um, an agenda here that we I can send out to you all if you are interested. And then we have our day. Oh, thank you, Ms. Moiston. It doesn't show much. Did everybody receive this or no? Or did you guys need this to be sent out? When when was this sent out? I don't think I got it. Okay. Forwarding now. This? When was this? It was on just the third. I don't recall. So what was the third Tuesday? So I'm I'll I'll just forward it. Okay, thank you, Miss Moiston. And does anybody else have any uh, upcoming events they would like to share? Oh. Yes, Ms. Moiston. We are celebrating our first Indian Independence Day um, celebration, I believe on the, th on the 16th, or I'll have more information at our next meeting about it, but I'm su we're super excited here to, to have that Hi. happen. Hi. Awesome, thank you, Ms. Moiston. Mm -hmm. And so for our next meeting date, I think we did um, say we are gonna meet next Thursday, the 12th, um, 5.30 to 7.30. And are there any other topics not anticipated within 24 hours of the meeting that anyone would like to discuss at this time? Mr. Vernon Jones? I just wanna say another thank you to our two co-chairs. You are working so hard. And I really appreciate it. Thank you all. Incredible. Thank you all for all you guys' work. I feel like we've been really killing it the last month and a half more than ever. Like I know that I feel like everyone's on the verge of um, burnout and I hope that everyone's taking care of themselves. And I appreciate all of you for all the work you're all doing. Yeah, thank you, Brianna. I'm in agreement. I feel like we've made incredible traction within the last couple of weeks. And we hit sort of um, a moment of being discouraged when we heard we weren't going to get consultants and what we were going to do. And I feel like we really just took off. So I really appreciate you all and, and your hard work and commitment. I think we're going to come out with, with great results. Um, 
So with that being said, and all of our business tonight being complete, I would like to call this meeting adjourned. Sounds good. Take care of yourselves. Be well. Be well, Be well everyone. Be well. Bye. Bye. Bye.